girl. My name is Les. I'm your host, and I appreciate you tapping in today. On the show, we talk about all of the different areas of life that help us feel healthy, happy, and thriving. And a big theme for me this year, as well as on the podcast, and I think for a lot of you too, has been embracing pivots, what it looks like to embrace change, whether that's in our personal lives, our career, switching gears, switching directions. And I'm really excited to be joined by an amazing guest today who can tell us a little bit about pivots because she's had some pretty big <laughs> pivots over the past year. So please join me in welcoming Miss Blake, newbie, creative editor. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have yeah, you Yeah, I pivoted. Yes. I've been pivoting. In big ways. <laughs> yes, I've been pivoting. Yes. I enjoy it. Absolutely. I mean, I've enjoyed watching it. So thank admittedly, you. you're one of my favorite people to follow. Oh, thank TikTok. you. Um, so I was so excited to have you here and to get to of chat course. with you about of kind course. of behind the scenes of what we see. Yep. It's very, uh, I think, think it's really authentic. What you see on TikTok is very much mm -hmm. my life. Yeah. Enough, yeah. at least. Absolutely. Enough of what I share. But mm -hmm. I've shared a lot of the pivot on there. Well, I guess if yeah. you've been following it, it's just like, it, I can't help but to because my life has just shifted. Yeah. And as I TikTok it, mm -hmm. it's just kind of out there for people to see. Yeah, you're bringing us along. Why, thank you. Yeah. So for people who may just be meeting you, you have a background in journalism. Yes. You've worked for some incredible publications, Essence, Glamour, Allure, yep. doing style editing. But over the past year, you've pivoted to kind of a different yeah. space. Can you tell us more about what you're doing now? It's almost exactly, well, I think we're like at maybe like the 14, 15 month mark. Mm -hmm. um, and I have pivoted really just for the Blake brand. Mm -hmm. So of course my last editorial role was the beauty and fashion director over at Essence Magazine. Yeah. And then I just kind of got to a point where I think you have to really that, that bet on yourself thing. Yep. And it's just kind of when the industry wasn't serving me anymore, mm -hmm. but also I'm very much one of those people who kind of sees the, the writing on the wall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I feel like so many of us in editorial, I was just like, this is a sinking ship and either I'm going to jump before it completely capsizes yeah, or I'm going to be on it when it capsizes and have mm -hmm. to get myself back up to the top. Mm -hmm. um, so I tell people like content creation right now is paying the bills, yeah. but uh, television and on-air hosting is exactly what I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people the easiest way to describe what I want to do is like Maya Jama who hosts Love Island UK. She's like the big UK it girl for mm -hmm. hosting. I want to be the US Maya Jump. Mm. Except the US Blake newbie. But yes. I feel like it's the easiest way to kind of explain to people right. the type of hosting I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to host all the dating shows. Yes. I want to host all the fun shows. I want to host all of the game shows. Yes. Like whenever you turn on your TV, the same way like Steve Harvey has monopolized <laughs> yes. hosting everything, yes. I kind of want to like slide in there Absolutely. in some of those ways. Yeah. Yes. So that is the the pivot is yes. to hosting and television. Yes. But content creation is just kind of like a piece of that. But I was doing that even when I was in editorial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that is a beautiful vision. I Thank so you. see that for you. And Thank I'm so you. excited for you. I'm trying. It is yeah. it is hard. The strike yeah. paused a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think people think that it was just scripted, but it, it, it impacted Everything. the entire industry. So yeah. even non-scripted. So mm -hmm. my hope is that now that writers are getting their due yeah. and hopefully next the actors get their due, yeah. then everything can kind of not go back to normal because normal was not working, mm -hmm. but kind of go back to a pace where we I can really get the ball moving on television. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I love what you just said about how content creation is paying the bills yeah. while you're kind of working on building a different direction for yes. your career. Because I think that's important. A yeah. lot of us, we need to do that yes. to get to where we want to be. Yeah. I think I've seen, I was actually having this conversation with two of my friends, mm -hmm. Asia and Scott yesterday, mm -hmm. who are both content creators, but Asia is over at New York Max The Cut. Mm -hmm. Scott is still a stylist, but now he has Dinner Plus, which is booming yeah. in terms of food content. Mm -hmm. And I think that social media has convinced people that it is always good just to jump. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, I, I think that there is a fine line between encouraging us to bet on ourselves yeah. and jumping almost irresponsibly. Yeah. I think... Um, especially for people that look like us, mm -hmm. there has to be strategy behind it yeah. personally. Like I think we'll see a success story and we automatically assume, oh, well, that can be me. But I think what people don't realize is that when I left Essence, I did not just pivot into this. Mm -hmm. I pivoted into another job, mm -hmm. which um, is venture capital. People ask, do I still do VC? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. But what I did was I pivoted 
into a role, uh, into another full-time role. Yeah. But I pivoted with a boss and in a position where I told her, I'm not signing exclusivities. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I I need to be in a position to be able to cultivate the Blake brand. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to cultivate the Blake brand and was given the freedom to do so for long enough that now I've been able to fully do the pivot. Yes. But I think that people, the assumption is like, I'm just going to do it because I just know that I... I, I can. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that in many cases, maybe you can, mm-hmm. right? It's like, yep. you probably do have the skill set. You probably are, you know, do have the charisma and everything else. Mm-hmm. But I don't suggest jumping with no safety net. Right. Um, that is just my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. But I do think that, again, social media has made a lot of people think that let's just jump without safety nets. And it's not, it's not always successful as mm-hmm. we've seen. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's, about having the discernment to know the difference between when to take a leap versus when to make a step. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. And when I left Essence, I took a step. Mm-hmm. And then when I was finally in position, I was able to leap. Yes. Um, but it's like, you know, it's like jumping off a cliff from 10 feet back. Yep. But you have to get, catch momentum to be able to jump. Absolutely. And um, yeah. so, yeah, it's about it's about that momentum mm-hmm. first. Definitely. Yeah. What were some of the steps you took to prepare you to make that change? So when I knew I wanted to leave editorial, mm-hmm. I started really, really cultivating my relationships that I already had had for years with brands. Yeah. I think <laughs> half the industry knew before Essence knew, I'm going to be honest. Like, <laughs> I had told every publicist I knew. Yeah. I was like... In three months, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to let y'all know in 90 days, I'm out of here. So keep me in mind for influencer things. Keep me in mind for consulting. Keep me in mind for hosting any panels Mm -hmm. or events that you guys may have. And I told everybody. So I think, which too, you have to teeter that line closely too, right? right? Because it's like, well, you don't want your employer to be like, how does everybody else know that you're leaving but us? So you need to know who to tell, how to tell them, what to tell them. Mm -hmm. Um... I made sure that I had enough money lined up. Mm -hmm. So I had said yes to enough brand partnerships that I knew, okay, how many months rent do we have? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then I had lined up my VC role. Mm -hmm. Um, And like, so it's, it's not as simple as like, you know, but I think about all the time I was also having this conversation. I would not have been stable enough if I had just relied on those brand partnerships Mm -hmm. at the time. Yeah. Had I just bet on those brand partnerships that I had, who knows? So having that VC role made it to where having everything, it made it to where then I could finally just... So yeah, those are the steps that I took to prep. And I really had to get myself together. Mm -hmm. It was like, Mm -hmm. we need to post more. Yeah. I needed to... So I I upped how much I was posting on TikTok, Mm -hmm. upped how much I was posting on Instagram, Mm -hmm. um, really in those 90 days leading up to me leaving. Yeah. Super smart. So everything, it was kind of different pieces of the puzzle that all fit together. Yes. Yeah. You can't just jump. Mm -hmm. You cannot just... and, And we've seen these success stories, right? We see these huge influencers, like these younger girls who are absolutely incredible. Like I think about like Monet who just Mm -hmm. hit the Forbes list, right? But it's like Monet is the outlier. Yeah. As fantastic and how as divine as her content is, she is the outlier. Yeah. Especially for women that look like us. Mm -hmm. Like I I, I implore you to tell me five Monets. Right. And so it's like for many of us, we are becoming content creators and doing these pivots from having jobs. Exactly. Um, and not jobs because content creation is a job. Yes. But from having what the, what is traditionally considered a job. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That reminds me of you had a video a while back where you said a really beautiful sentiment where it, uh, <laughs> it's expensive you, to dream. It is expensive yes. to dream. It's yes. a privilege to dream. It is. what you said. Yes. Which is, I think, so important and not enough people acknowledge that yes. and talk about that yes. because it's hard to dream if your basic needs aren't being met. If you're thinking about survival, right. there's not room. No. And I think I've been able to be extra audacious mm-hmm. and make take risks that other people have not had because I have always known in the back of my head, which is where the privilege comes in, I've always known in the back of my head that my parents mm-hmm. will always be there to catch me. Yeah. And I think that while it's a point where my parents are like, now we thank God, like I don't have to ask my parents for anything, mm-hmm. right? But it is, you are more inclined to take those risks yeah. when you know that that there are parents not only who 
can be that safety net, but who are equally as invested in you right. achieving your goals. Yeah. Because, you know, there were, uh, me and my mom, it was funny when I got the essence role, she sent me this long text about how proud she was of me. Mm -hmm. But she also was talking about how me and her had had this blowout fight. Mm -hmm. Um maybe three or four months before I got the essence role mm -hmm. because she was just like, you're not making enough money. Mm -hmm. Me and your father are about done supporting you mm -hmm. and these dreams. Yeah. You need to move home mm -hmm. and to DC yeah. and you need to just copyright or do something, but you can't, you, you, you don't need to be doing it here. Mm -hmm. it, Cause it was, it was just like, there has to be an end time. Yeah. You know, my parents had given me an end time and I was about to approach that in time, mm -hmm. it literally just happened that literally maybe a month, two months later, I got the essence job. But yeah, it it I have been able to dream as big as I have yeah. because my parents have always been like, this is what Blake wants to do. Yeah. So we're going to support it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is not a privilege that everyone has. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I can relate and feel similarly. Like my parents have not been able to necessarily provide financial support, but in terms of moral yep. support and encouragement yep. and stability yep. of if I did want to move back home to yep. Seattle, yep. I don't. But if I did, I would always have a place to go that is yep. stable and safe I think and my supportive. mom would want me to move back. My I think she wants me to be. I'm like, yeah. what? I'm like, I'm 30. <laughs> what do you like? Almost 30. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, you want me to move back? But I think like in perfect, yes. in the perfect world, she wants me to move back yes. home. That comfort of having you close. Yes. Like, they love that. Yes. But they also love seeing you spread your wings. It's oh, like. Oh, they, they think, think they're fake. My parents think they're influencers. <laughs> Every single time my dad my dad is asking me for residuals in his <laughs> US Open content. I'm yes. like, okay, absolutely not. He's like, but I'm the talent. Absolutely. They think they really think they're influencers. I'm like, me and my mom did the Jurgens campaign mm -hmm. and which was beautiful. She's like, where's my percentage? And I'm like, oh sweet Period. God. But yes, they love it. <laughs> they love it. They love it. Definitely. Yeah. And it's it's I'm sure an amazing thing to see your oh, child yeah. be able to reach their goals yeah. and have these beautiful dreams. Yeah. And I'm also sure it was probably a really hard conversation when she did call you and was like, listen. Well, I'm funny enough, we had it in person oh. because she came to New York to visit me. She she loves to come and visit me. Yeah. I'll never forget we had it. And I was like, you can leave. Mm. And so she like left. And then so when she texted me after I got an essence job and yeah. she was just like, because I just, and sometimes too, it's like, I love my parents. Mm -hmm. Like they have... I, I rave about them all the time. Yeah. But I do think that sometimes, especially with our parents' generation, yeah. we are able to see things for ourselves that maybe they can't because okay. their path was much more traditional. For sure. For so many of our parents, they're the first college graduates mm -hmm. or you know what I'm saying? And so like for many of them, it's like, but this is not, this is unconventional and it hasn't worked for this long. Like yeah. I think you need to go the, the conventional route. Yeah. But I think when me and my mom were having that conversation, like I just knew yeah. that there was bigger and I just knew that there was more. But how do you say that to the parent right. who is like, we are damn near paying your rent yeah. every single month. Like you are barely contributing anything because you, your income can't allow for that. So yeah. it was a tough conversation, but it is, I think sometimes... I think that is when the betting on yourself and yeah. really just staying step. But like I just told him, I was just like, I know that there's more. Mm -hmm. And there was more. Yes. But sometimes they can't see what we can see absolutely. in ourselves yeah. and for our future. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And also during that time when things were at a little bit of a lull and you were having to really bet on and believe in yeah. yourself, how were you staying encouraged? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think that the reason I stayed encouraged yeah. is because it has always been, at least with my career path, it's always been the slow creep. Mm -hmm. So while it it seems like it was a lull, it has always been a creep. Mm -hmm. So it was like in COVID, you know, I I got like I was getting all of these newer deals. So I was just like, while it wasn't the springboard mm -hmm. that Essence was, I was always getting something a little bigger. And I think that that makes you encouraged because you're like, well, this person sees me or this yeah. brand sees me. So yeah. if I just keep at it, mm -hmm. then it'll be bigger. And I think too, it's like, as I'm sure you've experienced, I think sometimes, not even to sound arrogant, but I think sometimes you just feel in your heart that you're going to be a star. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. don't know how, yep. and you don't know the path that it's going to be, and you don't know the route that it's going to take, yep. but you just know in your heart of hearts. Yep. There's something really big yeah. at whatever the end of what this is. Definitely. And I think that that, I think slight delusion mm. yes. is what kept me encouraged. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Embrace the delusion. The delulu is yeah. really, 
It is important. And I think that I've only recently understood how important it is. Mm -hmm. You have to be, to do what we do, yeah. you have to be slightly delusional. You do. This industry you doesn't make sense. Put yourself out there like that? It doesn't, like yeah. you're putting yourself out there. You're like, a, a slight bit of delusion is actually very healthy, <laughs> I think. And the only way to survive through this. It is. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree that I do think you have this feeling where you know you're meant for more or yep. you're in a space yep. where like there's something yep. else yep. and I want to follow that. Yep. It's Even just the how. Sense. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing is like I think about when I was doing the um, It's Expensive to Dream video. Yeah. It was because a girl had asked and it was like so many people had responded and they're like, the thing is I believe in myself mm -hmm. and I know that there's more. Yeah. But I don't have that safety net. Yeah. And so it does, it it puts into perspective, again, the privilege when it's like there are so many people out here mm -hmm. who actually are destined for more, who have yeah. the skill set, who are meant to be stars. Yeah. But literally just don't have the circumstances. Yeah to be able to be delusional. Right. They're constantly operating in logic and what makes sense for the moment. And I have been able to operate in spaces of delusion and spaces when it's like, this doesn't really make much sense, but I was able to do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And I think in that, it it makes me wonder, like, how do we invest in those people so yes. they can have space to do yes. that or help one another create yep. safety nets, yep. even if we don't have one built in yep. and what that looks like. Yep. And I think there's, because there seems to be so many things, not so many, but a lot of things in place for like people who want to be small business owners or, or, you know, like there's so many things for black people who want to do those things, mm -hmm. but there are not as many, um, resources right. for black people who want to do what we do right. in terms of just content creation, right? Yeah. Because it's too volatile mm -hmm. for these big corporations or big money yeah. to invest in, right? There's right. there's corporations, you know, I just did a partnership with UPS. They're investing in black designers. Mm -hmm. investing, but unfortunately, there aren't as many people out there willing to bet on things that aren't as tangible. Right. And so it, it does suck because there are so many girls who could be these big content creators. But what people don't understand is becoming a content creator is expensive. It is. Like yeah. I became a content creator because of the many places I was able to go yep. because of my job. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's like people are always like, well, how do, you, how do I get into these spaces? Again, you have to have the avenue to get into the spaces. Right. So it is. It is. It's. It's unfortunate because you think, like you said, you think about how much talent is out there that yeah. just can't be in position. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And one thing that I'm hopeful about is that we are at a time where access to creating a platform is more democratized yes. than it's ever been. Even yes. shows like this. Yes. You know, I was able to create yep. a podcast in my bedroom five years ago yep. that is now what it is yep. versus 15 years ago, you needed a radio deal or yes. a TV deal yep. to reach people in yep. that way. Yep. And so there are ways we, we just have to sometimes be a little bit crafty yes. and it takes a while. Yes. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the thing is the craftiness. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's like, but I think, again, you had the resources to be crafty. True. You know, and so I, I just, I, we're, we're in a really privileged position, mm -hmm. but it is, it's just like, there's so many, even when you look at some of like the TikTokers who mm -hmm. are clearly not like industry girls, mm -hmm. but are just hilarious girls sitting yeah. in the house in the back, like yes. there's so much black creativity out there. And so it is, I hope that, you know, even when I look at brands like um, Topicals mm -hmm. just did a brand trip and they took some... Uh, of course, it was some influencers that you were like, yes, we didn't we didn't anticipate those. And then they had these curveballs in there. Mm -hmm. And it was like, these are the black women who wouldn't usually get opportunities to be on these trips or the black men that wouldn't get opportunities to be on this trip. So I think, too, there are places, you know what I'm saying? That is an avenue yes. to put them in different position. Definitely. Yeah. And it's refreshing to see. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was like, this is a group. <laughs> I was like, this looks so fun. Like, so yeah, there is. Yes, there, there, there are not loopholes, but there, there are pathways mm -hmm. to doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 One of the things I would love to go back to when we were talking more about your pivot from leaving editorial, yep. going into content creation, was you touched on the importance of relationships, yeah. how you had relationships with different people yeah. and you were kind of getting yep. those things into position yep. to prepare you to take that step. Yep. Um, what has been really helpful for you in mm -hmm. terms of building your network, building those relationships and cultivating relationships? I say all the time, I am my father's child. <laughs> and when I say that, I am a chatty girl. <laughs> So I think 
number one, what has been good for relationships, which again can also be a burden because it's like not everybody is like this, but I'm super outgoing. Mm -hmm. Like I could talk to a brick wall if I wanted to. And so I think that has helped is that like I'm I'm super chatty and talkative, but I'm also just, I've always been what is very, very much been emphasized to me because I also talked about this in the It's Expensive to Dream piece mm -hmm. was I've witnessed my parents do it, yeah. right? Like my first job at CBS when I moved to the city mm -hmm. was through a family friend. Mm -hmm. My job at Glamour that I got was through a family friend. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, some people call it black nepotism, but I've witnessed my parents maintain and cultivate these relationships so that when their kids became of age or wanted yeah. to do things, they could call on people. Yeah. And so I think that I have just really adopted that. Mm -hmm. And not for not for my own personal gain, because I, I talk about that a lot. Like it's yeah. like I don't go into a relationship with people from the standpoint of what can you do for me? Right. There's a lot of that in the industry. Yeah. But I literally just go into it like I'm going to be Blake. Mm -hmm. And that goes into believing and betting on yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Blake is pretty damn likable. Yeah. Maybe not to everybody, but there are a lot of people that like me. Yeah. I'm pretty damn likable. I'm nice. I'll talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, girls, when they meet me in person, they're like, you act just like you do on TikTok. I'm like, yeah. 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 I, I, I act I'm the being same. Myself. I'm being myself. Mm -hmm. And so I think. Not just relationships, but like ability. Yeah. If I have learned anything is that people can read through when it is contrived, when it is for you want something. Yep. Just talk to people. Yep. Um, and it has helped me yep. because it's like when when young girls or other people are like, I really want to do this or I want a job here. I usually know somebody that I can call mm -hmm. to help. Yeah. And usually because just I've been just nice to them. Yeah. They are willing to help. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I had someone recently ask for advice on starting to work with brands and how they do that. Mm -hmm. And what I told her was like, brands don't make decisions people do. Yes. Like get to know yes. people yep. and have yep. them be familiar with your work so yep. that when an opportunity comes up, you're top of mind. They yep. know you. They're familiar yep. with you. Yep. Because I think sometimes we do think, okay, oh, yeah. this brand or this entity or yep. this thing, but it's all people behind and it. And follow up. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, keep following. Like, I, for example, like I had done my first partnership with um, AT&T mm -hmm. at Essence Fest mm -hmm. and I was just myself. Yeah. I was easy to work with. Mm -hmm. I did, I did the work. Yep. Doing the work is important. Yes. <laughs> yes. I did the work and I was good at the work. Yes. And when it was time, they have this big initiative this year and they always pick a face. They came back and picked me as a face. Mm -hmm. And it's like, but I kept in contact. Yes. Like, and social me media has made that easier. So you don't have an excuse. Mm -hmm. Comment on the person's picture. Right. Like a story. Yeah. Like, just continue to be, continue to interact. Social exactly. media has made that much easier. Yeah. Like it used to be where you had to send a follow-up email every six months. Like, hey, just checking in. Yep. Or now yep. you don't have to phone call. Just comment, like, yep. just stay in, in their orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Stay yeah. in conversation. Yep. Goes yep. a long way. Yep. Yeah. So I would also love to talk to you a little bit about beauty because yeah. you obviously are an expert in the beauty and I love beauty space. And, you know, as this episode comes out, we're kind of nearing the end of the year. It's holiday yeah. time. It's shopping time. Yeah. I think a lot about what it means to be kind of a savvy consumer. Yeah. Because there's so many things vying for our attention and our attention. Mm -hmm. And so as somebody who has worked with so many brands, tried so many things, I'm curious about how you go about being a smart consumer and what gets your attention. Uh. I've had to completely change my ideals on consumerism mm -hmm. in the beauty space mm -hmm. because I, I ruined my skin. I've been I've talk, been talking about this on yeah. TikTok. I've ruined my skin. Mm -hmm. So I had to completely get my skin back in order. Mm -hmm. So now I would dare to say my beauty routine is a lot more parred down than mm -hmm. people would think. I've always been a makeup girl. Like I feel like there's never an issue with trying new makeup. Yeah. But I think find the things that work mm -hmm. for you and find the things that work for your body. For yes. example, like my skin, like I am now on tretinoin. Mm -hmm. Like I think that is important. Yep. Like if you have acneic skin, mm -hmm. go to a professional, yes. go to a derm, yes. get prescribed something. Now I don't deviate. So yeah. unfortunately, I don't try much skincare mm -hmm. anymore. I try a lot of body care. Mm -hmm. That has been my new thing to explore because uh, I've been telling people that, number one, body care is a booming industry right now. It's like yeah. all the brands are deciding on skincare for body. Yeah. But I've been telling people like, 
so many black girls, you know how there's like those running jokes about like black girls when we're kids, we all get like scars on our ankles. Like, I don't know. But the issue is that I've continued to scar into adulthood. Like yeah. I could rub up against a pillow and I scar. So I've been telling people a lot about like discolor like discoloration has been a big thing. So I've been yeah. using like a lot of vitamin E. Mm. Topical slather I love is slather. so good. Yes. For body care, mm. uh, Augustinus Botter, like Necessaire, all of these brands have really great body care. Yeah. I personally think that you can never splurge enough on fragrance. Mm. That involves perfumes and candles. Mm -hmm. So that is the one thing where it's like, damn, Blake, do you have enough candles and fragrance? Actually, no. <laughs> the answer <laughs> the is The limit no. does not exist. The limit does not <laughs> exist. And I think makeup, continue to, exp if that's your thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that for the girls who want to explore makeup and don't, like love heavy makeup. Like I'm a full face girl because I'm always on camera and I am not above body dysmorphia and hating the way I look on camera. So I wear a lot. Uh, now I do a lot of camera makeup. Um, but for the girls who don't do all that, like Ami Cole has fantastic, mm. like yes. finger, like mm. makeup, like rare beauty is great with mm. the easy makeup. Like there's so many things, but I think that the one thing that you can never go wrong with mm -hmm. fragrance mm -hmm. And body care, mm -hmm. especially as Absolutely. black girls. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Because we always want to smell good and feel oh, good. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it's always like like people say it, but it really is a thing when they're like, she looks like she smells good. The best compliment. Like that's a thing. It is. That is a thing. Yeah. So smell good. Yes. Yes. I also love what you just said about knowing kind of what's important to you or what your thing is. Yes. Being willing to go all in on that. Yes. And then if something's not your thing, if you're not into it, you tune it out. You don't. The thing about me is I'm like all the way over here. <laughs> So it's like, it's like Blake is pretty extreme. So like, yeah, like I, I am very extreme now with the skincare and the body care and all of these things. That doesn't have to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. That is just personally what I, I really take a lot of pride yeah. in self, like not even, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess you can call it self-care mm -hmm. or upkeep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Like I spend a lot. That is where I'm willing to spend mm -hmm. a ton of my money is in upkeep. Yeah. 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 And you made a point too, and I think thought about this a lot, especially now that the podcast is like becoming video because it used to be audio yes. only. It is when you see yourself a lot girl. and a lot, your job girl. involves now being girl. perceived. It does. Girl. It's like, oh, this is I have been like, different. what is this? Because it's as I'm sure you can imagine, you're like, this is not actually how I look. Right. Yeah. You'll see yourself and you're like, I'm telling y'all. Something's lost in translation. Something is lost in translation. Yeah. These cameras, these they lights. Do. You start looking like a completely different person. Yeah. And so now, yeah, Blake gets a little heavy handed <laughs> with the makeup. Like admittedly so. And and so uh, but that is my thing. Like I said, I'm I'm a lot of things, but I'm not a girl who is above looking at herself. And like I, the, like the 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 impact of society has not skipped me. And I'm and I'm very unapologetic in that. Like you'll go to my TikTok and I'm like, come with me to get fillers. Mm -hmm. Come with me to get this done. Yeah. Come with me to get this. I'm not above yeah. it. Well, and I think a lot of us appreciate the honesty too. Yeah. Because for a long time people were doing those things and acting like they didn't. Yes. And it's like, just let us know. Just want to we want to do that. But that's what I'm like, I want to do. I just got an email today. They were like, Do you want to come in? Because you know everybody's talking about um facial balancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I got an email like, Do you want to do facial balancing? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, so I'm going to go do that. So yeah, and try it out. Tune in to TikTok. Yeah. I'll be doing facial balancing <laughs> on TikTok because I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. But it, I will say, you have to have people though around you who are willing to tell you to stop. Right. Yes. Like, Absolutely. They're like, I've, I've definitely like, I've noticeably, people always keep coming on my TikTok recently. Everybody's like, you're noticeably smaller. Like mm -hmm. I have a friend that called me the other day and was like, Let's not lose too much more weight. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, let's not, like, let's not do that. Or my mom is always like, so do we need to, do you have to go get the Botox? Like, your face is already not moving. Do we need more Botox in the face? Or like, it is important to have people, though, who will ground you to yeah. say like, so I get it. You have to see yourself back, but I am telling you yeah. that you look fine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, so, so yep. actually stop. Yeah. And I think that we see that when we look at so many people- in the industry, we're like, why is nobody telling them right. to stop? Right. And so I think it is important to have people who can be honest with you and be like, yeah, let's stop. Yeah. Yeah. Who still want you to be you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Very important. Yes. Absolutely. So are we'll there see. any like upcoming either beauty or style trends that you're really excited about? 
I really, I don't know if it's upcoming, but I love that we are getting back to the full face. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of, it's like 2016 is coming back. Yes, the full <laughs> face is coming back. Like, remember the ages where we were like, I know that my saves were full of like makeup Shayla. Mm -hmm. Who else? It was like makeup by Aloe, yep. like Amrezi, mm -hmm. like the high glam girls. Yep. I do love that high glam is coming back. Yes. Um, style wise, I really love the low rider trends. Mm -hmm. I personally don't have the stomach that I want for it, but I love a low rider. Yeah. I love that the girls are wearing low riders. Um, it's like a 90s, like I think of like 90s Donnell Jones videos. And I'm just like, the girls are wearing low rider jeans. I think that it is really fabulous. Um, you know what I love? I've noticed that the girls are wearing true religions again. Oh. And now I God. wish I would not have thrown my true religions no. away in high school. Oh. Um, just everything old is new again. I kind of just love that there's this freedom mm -hmm. with wardrobe, period. Yes. Where people are just wearing whatever the hell they want yes. that I'm really enjoying right For now. Sure. Yeah. I think people are getting back to using fashion as self-expression. Yes. It's fun to see. Yes. And I think TikTok and like mm -hmm. places like that have made it like a safe space mm -hmm. because you will always find somebody who has style like you. Mm -hmm. Like if you you're, if you've all ever like worried, like, will somebody like, does somebody have a style like mine? And it's like, yeah. Like, yes. You can find your people. You can find <laughs> your people. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And it is fun to see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And something, too. I mean, as somebody now in my 30s, too, I think sometimes those of us that are a little bit older feel a lot of pressure to, like, do what the younger people are doing. And oh, yeah. I want to encourage us to not. Like, yeah. it's okay to not do if you're a millennial, you don't need to cosplay a Gen Z. No. No, we can don't. update. We don't, don't. we don't need to be doing the same things we were no. doing in 2015. No. But we and don't I don't think we should like, be. Yeah. No. And I think it's been, there. there is this thing towards like aging gracefully. Yes. That is happening. Mm -hmm. Like we look at the, the supermodels documentary that yeah. just came out on Apple TV and like all of these things. And it's like, there is, which is why it's so crazy because it's like, we are now the age where the girls on Twitter, I laugh all the time. Where like when the girls are arguing on Twitter, we're the old bitches. I know. And I'm like, yes. But you know what? <laughs> the reason that now, and I used to be that. You know, when you're young, you're mm -hmm. like, she's old. She's right. this, all these yeah. things. She should be focused on this. She mm -hmm. should be focused on finding a husband, having kids. And now that I'm completely out of that space, right. I realize that there is such beauty and privilege mm -hmm. In growing old yes. and living 100%. and growth and knowledge. It's like the Blake that was calling the girls old bitches, silly. Like I'm just like there was yeah. so much more to learn right. that she hadn't learned. Yeah. There was so much more to, to dive into. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm in my – it's so crazy now because it's like now that I'm in my late 20s, mm -hmm. I cannot wait to get to the 30s. Mm -hmm. I've All the the women that I talk to are like yeah. the 30s are beautiful. Agreed. And then it's like I talk to women, they're like, no, the 40s. Yeah. And then I was recently at Essence Fest and I was talking to Tisha Campbell Martin and she was like, no, 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 but 50. Oh, and so yes. it's like there is, there is such beauty yes. in value. Mm -hmm. I look back at Silly Blake and I'm like, you weren't doing life right, sis. <laughs> there was so much more to see. It's all part of the learning. It's all part yep. of the learning yep. thing. And so I, it, it, it is like yeah. aging and growing old. Blake gonna always love a nip and tuck. I want to be abundantly clear. <laughs> so I might be 60 on TikTok getting a facelift. It might be come with me to get a facelift. Yeah. <laughs> but that is my decision. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And... It won't be, it's all about your reasoning. Absolutely. Like it won't be to fight right. time. Right. I will be the fine 60 year old with a facelift. Yeah, absolutely. And I will embrace that. Yeah. Hopefully a 60, I don't need a face. Hopefully I never need a facelift. Right. But if I want a facelift, yeah. then cut me here <laughs> and yank it back. So yes. Absolutely. Yes. And I think as I'm getting older, I'm appreciating how much more there is to learn. Because I think when yes. you're young, when you're in your like early to mid 20s, and you're like, okay, I'm grown now. I know everything. Ugh. The older you get, the more you realize <laughs> how much you don't know. And you kind of embrace that. The Saturn return learning. is beating my ass. Oh, yeah. It has yeah. been the most trying time of my life. Yeah. But it's so crazy because it's like you're in this place. Mm -hmm. Number one, nobody prepares you for how rough the Saturn return actually is. Yeah. But it's so crazy because it's like, yeah. it is so trying and so hard, but you are learning so much at yes. such a rapid speed. Yes. 
that you that you see the value in it. Mm-hmm. But I I am ready to get out of it. But I'm just I'm just like I don't really want to learn anything else. But I just am learning so much. Yes. And it's like things that I would have like I am a completely different person than who I was at 25. Yep. Like not even so remotely real. similar. Yep. It is unreal mm-hmm. the change. Yep. That somebody if somebody would have told me in three and a half years that I would be I am I don't even recognize 25 mm-hmm. year old Blake anymore. Mm-hmm. And so it is, but there's such beauty in that, it especially is. when you feel like I've been in this really introspective place because the Saturn return will will force you into it. It does. And it's like I think you have to experience these things yeah. to become who you who I actually want to become. Absolutely. You realize how important all of the the stress and the struggles yeah. are to getting you to where you want to be. Exactly. Yeah. The best way that I can describe the Saturn return is it's this series of events being like, are you sure you want what you think you Girl. want? Girl. And it, it will continuously test you <laughs> yeah. and push you. Yeah. How bad do you want it? Right. And that's when the delusion comes in. It does. To keep you going. I think delusion is pushing you like, through this my... is teaching me. Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. We're going to keep going. It's like, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I want it. But it's beautiful on the other side. Is it? Yes. Okay. Yes. When did yours end? Um, I'm a Saturn and Capricorn baby. So I think like at the beginning of 2020 or the end of 2019 was when I got, but when I entered my Saturn, people weren't talking about Saturn returns back when I was Entered you your mine. Saturn return, right. In 20, I don't know, 18, okay. I think was when okay. I was that age. So yours was about I was years. already getting my butt whipped by Saturn. I didn't know what was <laughs> happening because nobody talked about <laughs> right. it back then. Right. And then my friend was like, oh, I think you're going through a Saturn return. I'm like, what is that? Yeah. What is, I'm halfway the through Saturn it. Saturn is what returning. Is it? So yes. I'm glad at least So now yours was about know. two years. It was about two and a half years, yeah. But you get through it and it gets better. So I got about a year left. All right. It'll get better. Let's re let's let's regroup in a year and a yes. half and see what's going I'm on. I'm excited to get an update. Yeah, because it's how you're it's whooping. Yeah. It is it's the Saturn is returning. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. But I'm excited. Yeah. I also want to talk to you just a little bit about self care, how you're doing, because yeah. for those of us who follow you, like <laughs> you stay booked and busy. I'm like Blake is doing like five events a day. Yeah. How is she doing this? You have also at times mentioned that you have experienced some anxiety, oh, girl. So how yeah. are you feeling? What's what's helping you kind of navigate that right now? Um, so I think that this was the first year that the anxiety had become almost debilitating. Mm-hmm. Um, so this year, what am I doing? I mean, I got a psychiatrist. Okay. Um, I've tried the med. We're we're trying the medication thing. Mm-hmm. It is. But that in itself is stressful. Yeah. Anybody who has experienced getting on SSRIs. Yeah. Figuring out that cocktail sometimes it's like I don't want to do this yeah. because it, it it like for me the issue has been it's impeded sleep mm-hmm. and I'm a girl That's who needs hard. sleep the way that I go yeah. so it's like I have done a lot of like I'm just not going to take it yeah. um, so what I have done but I I knew that I couldn't do nothing yeah so I now uh, and I talked about this on Alexis's thing worked out a lot yeah um, I've worked out I work out a lot now I'm. I have a really rigid supplement um, routine. Mm-hmm. Like I take probably no BS, maybe like 30 supplements throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the main ones that are most So the ones that had, the one that has been transformative for me yeah. is lemon balm, mm-hmm. which people, which funny enough, people talked about on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I discovered it on TikTok. Mm-hmm. And psychiatrists, uh, well, holistic, those that take holistic mm-hmm. approaches have all yeah. said the same thing, yeah. that lemon balm really is as great as it says. Mm-hmm. Lemon balm, magnesium, mm-hmm. um, ashwagandha, mm-hmm. even though I feel like the lemon balm and magnesium has been yeah. the the most transformative. Sure. Yeah. Um, I've leaned into the THC mm-hmm. for those that want to indulge in that. Mm-hmm. And I stopped drinking this year. Mm. Um but I leaned into THC because I joke all the time. I'm like, I can't be raw dog in this battle <laughs> return. Y'all. I get it. Like something, I get it. something has to give. Yeah. Um, but I stopped drinking, which I think mm-hmm. has actually been the most yes. transformative because yes. two, what you guys will always see on my TikToks and before everybody would be like, how do you drink and eat this much? Mm. And the reality was, well, that takes, it takes its toll. It like, yeah, it was yeah. great for TikTok to see. Yeah. The beautiful thing is that New York is a heavy mocktail city. It is. So you can go anywhere. Yes. And it's like now when y'all see me doing toasts yeah. on social media, it's like, no, that's a, like, it's a mocktail. Mm-hmm. Um, the not drinking has been 
really transformative. Yeah. I do a lot of deep breathing mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I have to. My therapist taught me that. Yeah. But it has been a the, I I didn't think that my anxiety would get to this point. Mm. But it and it came out of nowhere. And I think that it was when I've talked through it with my therapist, I think that it was the the massive shift yep. that went from having the full time. I think the yeah. pivot, like yeah, I, I genuinely do think that the mm-hmm. pivot contributed a lot. Yeah. And it started with, and I just started having frequent panic attacks. Mm. And it was like, something is off. Yeah. But I think that I am finally, I will say that I think that I am finally at the place where I have... I've mitigated the panic attacks. And the thing is, you never, you don't heal from anxiety. Right. You just learn how to properly manage it. And I've always been an anxious person. I think Mm -hmm. not, screw delusion. In order for somebody to go, go, go the way that I do, there is a a layer of anxiety to that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think that, that. I think that I never thought about it like that. In order Mm -hmm. for somebody to go at the pace that I do, Mm -hmm. there usually is, an anxiety piece. It's yeah. like the tweet that said, like, the um, the more I healed, the um, less ambitious I yes, became. I love, yes. And I think that I am in peak ambition, but mm. with that comes a lot of anxiety. Mm. And I still am, right? Like, I'm just going to be an anxious person. I have been since I was a child, and so I know that, but I have mitigated it to where it's not derailing me. Yeah. Um, but you just have to, you know, and I was thinking about it, the title of your podcast mm-hmm. because I was like, balanced black girl. I was like, I'm totally not a balanced black girl. <laughs> and I, but I think that this year has taught me how to properly manage the imbalances of life. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. And so, yeah. yeah. So I think that this, I've only managed it this year because this year has been whooping my ass. Mm-hmm. And so you have to figure out life is never, my friend sent me this tweet that was like, why are the 30s so great? And somebody was like, I think that the 30s, why people say the 30s is so great Mm -hmm. is because you come to a point of acceptance that life is not linear enough to ever have it all together. Yes, exactly. And so I think that I am, while I haven't hit the 30s yet, I think that I am in that season of understanding there will always be points in my life where one thing requires more attention than the other. Yep. And I'm in this season where my mental health is requiring more attention than anything else in my life. Yes. 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 Well, thank you so much for just sharing so vulnerably. Of course. The girls are stressed. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, and that's the thing is I think people don't like, uh, now people talk about it a lot, Mm -hmm. but there is a mental health crisis in this country. Absolutely. In this world. Yes. But especially this country that is happening. Yes. And those of us who make it look good, I think don't talk enough about like, me and so many of my friends who make this thing look good are like, this is the hardest, most trying period of my life and yeah. I can't figure out the why. Yeah. yeah. And I am not exempt from that, mm-hmm. but I just I just keep going. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. 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 And it sounds like you're in a season of like getting your toolbox together, figuring out that, what tools are that. helping you yep. while you yep. navigate these feelings and all these changes. Yep. And when to deploy them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I am. I'm yeah. just, I'm in the getting, I'm literally trying to get a really good toolbox mm-hmm. together. But I've also, like I said, it's like in the learning the things, Yeah, I can't help but to think when it's, think of the greater purpose, I can't help but to think that all of this mm-hmm. is happening because something even bigger is coming mm-hmm. and I have to be able in the position to do it and accept it. And yeah. if I don't have the tools that I learn in this season, then I won't be able to be successful in the next season. Yeah. That might be delusion. But- I think it's true. I, that's how I've been it's thinking true. about it. Absolutely. I've literally just yeah. been like, this is all preparation mm-hmm. for what is next. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Even what you were saying about alcohol, I've had very similar sentiments. I, I don't drink much yep. the past few years because I realized that I don't have time to be as tired as alcohol makes no. me. No. And my hangovers also were. Like, like, like it, it wasn't yeah. just that. My hangovers, I, I turned 26 and then the that hangovers after were like- After 25, it gets a lot worse and it takes more out of like you. Like 36-hour hangovers. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. like, I, I don't have time. Right, exactly. I don't have time to wake up puffy because then yep. I'm going to be pissed about how I look on camera. I don't have, to, I don't have all Sunday to I don't have all Sunday to recover. recover. Yeah, it's real. And so I will say that, yeah, there are some, like, do I miss the occasional cocktail? Sure. But the thing is, I'm also haven't restricted myself so terribly yeah. that it's like, if I want, if I do want a cocktail, then mm-hmm. it's like, okay, then have a cocktail. Mm-hmm. The thing is, because of how I feel now, I just don't desire need it. a yeah. cocktail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Which I think can be an incredible tool oh, yeah. for 
managing anxiety. Yes. And I, I've also had a lot of experiences with anxiety and I didn't realize how much alcohol was a contributing factor yes. when I was younger that now I can see how it, it made those situations a lot worse. Because it helps in the moment. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, but you, then you wake up and you have the hangover and the hangover makes you anxious. And right. then you have, I would have like hangover anxiety yeah. of like what I did when I was drunk. Right. And like how it was received. Yeah. And, they, and I was just like, this is, let's just, let's just not do it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for, of course. for sharing. And I'm excited too, as you continue to refine your toolbox and like lean more into your self-care. We're going to see. To see. I think I'm going to try the clay making thing. I recently I did the potter. I saw you did I that. Think we're, yeah. I think we're going to try that. It, I felt so mm. calm. Yeah. Now my nail girl, I got my nails done yesterday <laughs> and my nail girl was like, you can't be doing that a lot. And I was like, <laughs> Okay, maybe like at the end of manicures, we'll yeah, do it. Yeah. So we're going to try. Yeah. Yes, I really enjoyed that. The beauty of hobbies. That. Yes. And I realized this year I don't have hobbies. Mm. Work was my hobby. Yeah. Or happy hour and eating. Eating is still a hobby. But it's like, that's not like a, I was like, Blake, you need tangible hobbies. Yeah, yeah. And I realized this year that I didn't have tangible hobbies. So we are currently on a hunt yes. to find our hobby. Yeah. The issue is I keep wanting hobbies that the nails impede. That's hard. <laughs> and I'm hard. not giving up the nails. <laughs> yeah. So it was like at the beginning of the year, I was like, I want to learn how to play the piano. People oh. with nails are like, that can kind of yeah. be trying. Now the pottery. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. We'll have to, we'll find you some well, hobbies. Yes. So. I'm going to just, I'm going to find a hobby. Yeah. If anybody has suggestions, let me know. Yes. I love that for you. Maybe, Thank I mean, you. do you like any kind of like sports or like rec things that you would want to play? Okay. We'll find you some other hobbies. Not really the athletic girl. That's okay. But I like Pilates. Amazing. I like yes. Pilates, but I yes. also, and again, it's like, okay, so, but the, is that a hobby? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Not necessarily. Like it needs to be something yeah. to be Transparent, yeah. I do hobbies. I mean, I do Pilates so that I can look good. Mm -hmm. I feel like hobbies aren't supposed to have right. pure enjoyment. Pure enjoyment. Yes. Like no, nothing at the end that you are like, this is yeah, the no end, end goal. result. No end result. Right. So we'll see what, what that hobby is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. We can explore. Yes. What so, like. yeah. But yeah. pottery is a good one. Po it, and it's so fun. And the yeah. space was beautiful mm -hmm. and it cultivates relaxation. So we'll see. Definitely. We'll see. Yeah. So one last thing before of we course. before we wrap up, um, your bio says I live a colorful life. I do. What does having a colorful <laughs> life mean to you? Uh, my life is the people around me are colorful mm -hmm. and fun. Yeah. Um, I have a life that is full of a lot of love mm -hmm. um, from friends who I call my chosen family yeah. to my family. Like I rave about my family all the time. Yeah. I just I think. I have been very, I've been very blessed. Mm -hmm. I have done things that many people can only dream of. Yeah. I have, I have had experiences. I have met people. I have, even the lows are colorful. Mm. Like I even feel like the things that have hurt me or scared me yeah. or have been so colorful. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is, I think too what keeps me going is it's like the the beauty yeah. of how great things have been in totality. Mm -hmm. And this girl, it actually came from this, I had never thought of it as colorful until this one woman on TikTok commented it was like, you live such a colorful life. Mm -hmm. And I think what makes it even more rewarding is that like nothing that I post is not what's actually happening. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I laugh a lot. Yeah. I cry a lot. Mm -hmm. I feel a lot. Mm -hmm. I experience a lot. But I look forward to a lot. Yeah. And I think that that there is, when even when times get hard and things like that, I think the reason that I'm able to see past my situation mm -hmm. is because I'm like, it has been this colorful it, it's you can't imagine that it's going to get less colorful, right? Yeah, and so I do. I I I love that. Like even this is colorful. Like being when I think like getting asked to do things like this, it's like mm. I live a really great life. Like I'm doing this on a Friday, and like then I'm going to go home and take a nap, and then I'm going to party tonight. Yeah. Like I think, but I think 
so many of us live colorful lives. Yeah. We just have to see it as that. Absolutely. That perspective. That perspective yeah. that it is colorful. Yeah. Even, Even when it's not. about the, the lows being colorful. It, the lows beautiful. are colorful too. Yeah. Like I'm like, I laugh at it. Now. Like I can laugh at the yeah. things that have been really hard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. We all live, we all can live colorful lives. Absolutely. It's just, a, it, it is all about perspective. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Really, thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Here. This was so colorful. It was colorful. This was so colorful. It was, but I loved your honesty, your vulnerability. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I try. Yes. I try. Where can our people find you to keep in touch? On the Tiki Talks, Blake Newby yes. underscore. My Instagram is Blake Lauren, Blake L A. W R E N. The reason they are different is because I was one of those people that said I was never going to make a TikTok in my life. <laughs> so I picked any, the first username that yeah. it suggests. Yeah. And now I'm making TikToks. Yeah. And hopefully I will be on your TV yes. on a major network or streaming service very soon. Hopefully yes. you'll see me on Peacock or HBO Max or Netflix or Hulu, yes. whoever the hell wants to hire me. <laughs> um, yes. So yes. 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 Yes to it all. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, we will link your contact info yes. and upcoming events in yes. the show notes so that everybody can find you. Yes. Thank you so much for being Thank here. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for tuning into Balance Black Girl. Make sure you stay subscribed. We come out with new episodes every Tuesday, so I will see you next week.